Hey Blenderheads, maybe like me you've always wanted to go see the Northern Lights, but you know, then this stupid virus comes along and now we're all stuck at home with nothing to do. Well don't be lazy, make it yourself. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to make this nice awesome aurora effect. Uh, we're going to be able to animate it and it's all going to look pretty cool. And before you ask, no, you don't have to melt your computer. This is all done in Eevee or Cycles if you want. So you've waited long enough, let's get stuck in. So here we are in Blender. Let's just get rid of the default light here. And I could make a joke about deleting the default cube and then remaking it, but I'm not so immature. Okay, now G and then Z to move it up a bit. And then we're going to scale it, Shift Z to just scale it in the X and Y axes, axes. And we'll just make something like this for the time being. So this is going to be our Aurora, this box. So F2 to rename, let's call it Aurora. Grab our camera here or make one if you don't have a default camera. And let's just Alt G, Alt R to reset it down to the origin here. In the right view, we're just going to rotate it up. So it's kind of pointing at the sky a bit. And then just G and kind of move it over here. Something like that will do. And we're going to Shift A. Add a plane and this is going to be our ground. So we'll just scale it up to be something like that for the time being. F2, rename it to ground. We're going to be doing a lot of shader editing. So let's drag this up like so and make it a shader editor. And then we'll split these two views like this. And if you've ever watched my tutorials before, this is kind of my favorite view setup, I guess. Uh, and in the left hand view, let's tap the tilde key, tilde, tilde key. Go view camera and then we're going to zoom in a bit here just to, so this will be like a nice little camera preview. Now as usual we're going to grab an HDR. So one thing before we continue as well, you just want to go to edit preferences and in your add-on section search for node and make sure to enable node wrangler because we're going to be doing a lot of noding. So select this background here, control T, that's a node wrangler I'm pretty sure. And then in this environment texture, click open. I'll supply an HDR in the comments that we're going to use. Um, it's from our mates at HDR I Haven. So just grab that. And if we just switch our view here to the rendered view and just hide our Aurora box for a second. Um, so this comes in pretty bright. Let's just drop down the brightness to look a bit more night sky sort of look. So that's a 0.1 in our strength. Seems to work pretty well. Now let's unhide our Aurora again and let's just make a new material. We'll call the material Aurora. We're just going to delete this principal BSDF and you shift A in the node editor on the search function here, right click it, go assign shortcut and then with your mouse over that assign shortcut window, hold down control shift A. And this will just mean we'll have a shortcut to bring up this search option here. So control shift A and now we can type emission and we want one of those. And what you can do when you do the search is you can push enter twice and it'll just drop the node down wherever your mouse pointer is. Plug the emission into the volume slot and you'll get this nice big white blob. That's exactly what we're after. So we're going to add a couple more nodes. I'm just going to push N to get rid of this sidebar for a second. And I might actually make this big as well, control space. So control shift A and we're going to add a gradient texture like that. With this gradient texture node selected, push control T and it will add a bunch of nodes here. In this texture coordinate node, there's like a whole bunch of different options that you can use here. We're mainly going to be concentrating on this generated type. And so what generated is, is it basically looks at the overall size of your object and what I might just do is control shift click on this gradient texture so we can see it. And I'm going to just delete the emission off here. And you don't have to follow along with this bit. This is just the demo purposes. This generated texture coordinate type will always adjust itself to the size of your object. So you can scale along the x-axis and the gradient will also scale in the same way. What it's basically doing is saying your texture coordinates start from like the bottom left hand point here and then along X it goes from 0 here to 1 here and along Y for instance it goes 0 to 1 here. So the next node that we're going to add is a gradient ramp node. So we're going to just move all of this over 
and then just do a, it's called color ramp. So that's this guy here. And we'll just delete this viewer node, connect the color ramp into the strength of the emission, connect our emission back into volume if you disconnected it before. And so you can start to see, we've got a bit of a gradient going across the box here. One thing to just do as well now is in the EV section, go into volumetrics and you might want to turn this tile size down. And this will depend on the speed of your machine. Um, you know, I found probably a four or a two is good for detail, um, but it can start to get a bit slow. So if you turn it down to two, for instance, and things start to get a bit slow uh, as we add nodes, then maybe just turn it back up to four. So this color ramp here, we're going to use this to add uh, kind of streaks along the box. So I'll show you what I mean. If you control click anywhere in this little gradient thing, you can add uh, little color swatches. Um, and so we want to make this one black. We'll make this next one black as well. And then this middle one here, we'll make it white. And then we're going to grab this one here, make it black as well. And then might just make this one here black too. And so you can see already we're starting to get this kind of a streak along the ramp here. And if I just drag all of these nodes across a bit, I can grab this color ramp and I can stretch it out. And it makes it a little bit easier to edit the gradient here. And so we can add a couple more streaks. So just control click, drop down like three colors, you know, turn it up, turn the middle one up to white, do it again, drop, drop, drop grab the middle one, turn it up to white. And so these will form the basis of the kind of ribbons that you usually see in the Aurora. And you don't have to make them all white. Um, this middle one here, like we could just grab this one, make it like a bit of a lighter color. Um, you do want to keep this black and white because we're going to add the color later on in the, in the uh, emission shader here. So what we're just dealing with on this color ramp is the strength of like the brightness of each of the Aurora itself. Now we have this first mapping here and this is the position of our ribbons basically. So if I hold, the, hold down shift and drag on this X location for instance, this could be a parameter that we want to animate, you know, to make the ribbons kind of move across the sky. And some of these other parameters as well will be useful um, and I'll show you a bit later. But let's control space this up to the big size and we're going to now add a noise. So again, control shift A, type noise, press enter twice, and it'll just drop it down. And so we're gonna use this noise to distort the mapping that gets fed into our gradient. And what that will do is distort the ribbon so they're not just these straight lines that we have at the moment. So again, we're gonna go control T, and we'll add in some mapping again. And then we want to go control shift A, add a mix RGB node and drop that in here. And so we're going to take this noise texture and, you, and mix it with the mapping here. So that's what we're gonna use this mix for. So just drop it in between the mapping and the gradient texture and then drop the color output of our noise into the second input on the mix, if it'll let me. There you go. So any of these mapping nodes just output a vector, which is essentially, a, you know, three values, like a color is three values. So you can use colors to kind of modify vectors. So, you know, the, the red will be X, the Y will be green, the blue will be Z. Yes, that's right. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And so now if we control space, give it a second to think, and you can see it's like messed everything up. So the first thing we're going to do just to kind of restore the ribboniness of our, of our volume here is on the, the mapping for the noise, we want to turn the Z scale down. Now the difference between the mapping for this is this is our mapping for our gradients itself, like our color ramp. So this is our kind of, you know, positions like we were looking at before, if we want to move things across the sky. Whereas this is the position for our noise. And so you can do things like change the scale of it, change the location of it. Um, 
And all of these parameters, of course, you can then go and animate later and come up with all sorts of cool effects. We've dropped this Z scale here down to 0.1 and we've got something that looks pretty kind of ribbon-esque. I don't know if that's a word. Uh, we could probably bring it down a little bit more maybe. Something like, like that. If we look at it sort of from the top view here, we can see you know, this is the kind of effect we're giving, we're getting. That that looks, it looks pretty cool actually. Um, but let's tweak some other settings here. In our noise, we're going to make this 4D. And what that does is give us an extra parameter here called W, which is just kind of, it's like a different version of the same noise. Um, we also have the scale here and we'll probably turn this down a bit just to kind of make these into a bit more like of a ribbon sort of style thing here. What you may have also noticed is that because we're distorting the texture coordinates here, it's basically pushed some of these ribbons kind of off the side of the box here. Um, so what you can do there is you can try adjusting the ribbons uh, scale. So I would say just turn this up to like probably two and then use the location and offset them back into the middle. So something like that will do. And that will get us all four of our ribbons that we made back into our viewport. Um, another parameter you can do, of course, so you can scale the ribbons themselves. You can also scale the noise. So you could, for instance, and I'm holding down shift when I'm adjusting these. Um, you can do things like you can compress the Y of the noise, which will kind of bring the curves of the ribbons closer together. Um, looking at that as well, I think we'll probably turn down this detail, which will just get rid of some of that sharpness that we're seeing here. We can turn the scale down even a bit more to get something that looks a bit more sort of flowy. So things like that. Um, and I mean, at the moment, the ribbons are kind of all sort of heading away from us. If we want to make this a bit more interesting, just with your mouse in the 3D view here with the Aurora object selected, go RZ and we'll just put these maybe at an angle like so. Might just grab our camera, go into the camera tab here and make it like a wide angle lens. So you can see a lot more of these ribbons now. That's looking pretty cool. And I might even go scale XX to scale a locally along the X axis scale it out like that, SYY along the Y axis as well, GYY, now YY, like if you push Y twice, it's the local axis, local Y axis. Um, so yeah, look at that, that's looking kind of pretty cool. GZ, let's move it up a little bit. Um, so let's just keep going, something like this. Of course you can, you know, get up in here and if you want to adjust the position of individual ribbons, you just need to move your gradient along. So maybe you want to move this one over to the left a bit more. But we can also, of course, just go back and tweak all of those to our heart's content later. Uh, might just slide this over a little bit, GXX, just to get that last ribbon in here. And then to, let's control space here. So to help keep things organized, I'm just going to grab these two nodes, slide them over a little bit, and then select all of these nodes to do with the ribbons that we've just created and we're going to push control J and that will create a frame around these nodes. And you can select the frame and then hit F2 and we're going to call it ribbons. And why don't we just do a quick save just because you never, never know. And this frame as well, you can give it a color if you like. Just push N to open up the sidebar here and we can make it a nice blue color like so. Now I've got some reference images here and I'll put uh, links in the description uh, as to where you can get them yourself. They all come from this Unsplash um, site, which is really good for like free images and stuff like that. So in this one, you can see that the Aurora is pretty bright down the bottom here, and then it fades off up into the sky. So let's do that bit now. So we're gonna do our same kind of setup as we've already done here with our gradient texture. So again, let's go Control Shift A, gradient texture, drop it down, Control T, and what you want to do is set the rotation here, the Y rotation to 90. Now, if you control shift click on this gradient texture, and let's just control space to zoom back out. What we have now is a gradient that goes from black at the bottom 
to white at the top. That's because we put a 90 degrees into this Y rotation. If we set that down to zero, we've got the same gradient that we had before that starts on the left through to the right. This is all cool, but you might be thinking, but I want white at the bottom, right? Don't I? And then black at the top if I want it to fade from the bottom to the top. Yes, you can do it that way if you like. Um, but I'm gonna show you a quick little trick here. We're gonna use an RGB curves node. And I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to put it right on top of this link here that's coming out of the gradient texture. And you can see nothing's changed at the moment. The way RGB curves worked and the, also the color ramp works is that they're mapping from black on the left here through to white on the right. So wherever the input comes in as black, this is this part of the graph and wherever the input is coming in as white is on the right hand side of the graph. So that means the left hand side of our RGB graph here is the bottom of our Aurora and the right hand side is the top. So what we want to do is make something that looks kind of like this. We're going to stick one point up the top here um, and you might want to set these to auto clamped handle which will stop the curve from extending up off of the graph. So we'll add one point here by clicking, then we'll click another point and add it here like so. And then the final point here, we wanna set that down to black. And again, just convert that to an auto clamped handle. This one should already be auto clamped. Maybe not, auto clamped. Yep, that's better. And then because we don't want the bottom to start at pure white either because then we're going to get this like hard line at the bottom of the box. We want this to start, still want it to start at black and then we might just add like another point here like so just so it will kind of fade up into the brightest part and then slowly kind of fade back down. So if we control space and have a look at it, you can see on our geometry this is the kind of effect that we're getting. And now let's apply that to the actual volume part. So we'll control space again. We'll delete this viewer node. And we're going to go control shift A, add in a math node. And we'll drop that down here. And we're going to take the output of this color ramp that goes into the first value. And then take the output of the RGB goes into the second value. So like so. And this operation, we're going to set it to multiply. And then plug the output value here into our emission strength. And I might just drag these down here. Now, control space back out. And now you can see we're getting that effect here where we've got a kind of bright bottom section and then it sort of fades very quickly off into the top. And of course now we can just get in here and tweak some settings a bit. I think we'll probably wanna make this transition a little bit smoother. So we could probably just bring this color up a little bit. So something like that looks good. So let's frame up these nodes as well. We'll just select them all, hit Control J, push F2 and type fade. And let's make it yellow and save. Uh, so it's looking cool. The white's kind of getting a bit boring. So let's add some color. We're going to put a gradient from uh, to between two different colors. One, you know, kind of at the bottom and then it's going to fade into a different color at the top. So we may as well just copy and paste uh, these nodes out of the fade section here. So shift D and then we'll just drag it down here and then you can do alt P to pull them out of the frame. And I might just control space and we can just drag them over. And because we're going to plug them in here. So let's just drop them here. And to make our colors, we're going to drop down a color ramp again. And then plug the factor for this gradient texture into the factor for the color ramp. Now you'll remember with our curves, our black or the bottom was on the left. The white or the top is on the right. And so let's just control space so we can see what we're doing here. Push N to get rid of that panel. So pick a color for the bottom. Usually it's green. Green is the most common Aurora that you can see. So we'll put a green here and put in like a super bright green like that. 
uh, and then we want it to kind of fade off to a red kind of color like so. The output of this color ramp or the color output of the color ramp goes into the color of the emission and there we go. It's looking a lot more like an Aurora now. And of course the same deal if you want to change like so the red comes in earlier you can always just drag this down um, but generally it's kind of just like a little bit of a red tinge at the top of the Aurora that you'll see. So that's looking great. Looking back at the reference here, the next thing we're going to add is these kind of streak patterns. And you can see they're kind of, you know, they're very defined um, and they can kind of, they add a lot of breakup uh, to the Aurora. So I'm going to control space again to give us some room. And these streaks, I'm going to add them in before this fade effect. So we want a noise, we're going to control T to add mapping. And this, the scale of this noise, we want to turn it up. Um, I mean, probably, probably about 80 or something. Um, turn the detail up a little bit. Uh, we can tweak these, of course, when we apply it. And then our good old friend, the color ramp. And plug our noise texture factor into the color ramp. And then for this guy, we just want to bring the black swatch up a bit and the white swatch down a bit. And this will just create a bit more contrast. Uh, in the noise texture. So if we control shift click on that color ramp, we can see it here. So by dragging this black swatch up a bit, we're kind of cutting holes into the noise and dragging the white one down, we're kind of adding a bit of brightness to it. And so this is our noise at the moment. We could even maybe add a bit more scale, something like that. And then right control right drag across this connection here just to disconnect it. And uh, the pain of this is we have to keep going back here and deleting this viewer node because it plugs into the surface here. So uh, it's kind of overriding the volume. So we'll just get rid of it. We've got our Aurora back. And then what we're going to do is... So this multiply node here that combines our ribbons, we'll use, that, we'll use another one of those. So Shift D to duplicate. Drop it in here between the ribbons. I'm going to pull this one down and then we're going to grab the color output from our color ramp and plug it into the second value there. Okay, so that's what we've got. It looks kind of crap and that's because we need to change this scale again like we did for the ribbons. We need to turn this kind of right down and so that's so the noise gets stretched in the z-axis. And so this looks a lot streakier and that's really what we wanted to do. One thing you want to do when you're creating natural phenomenon is always be looking to add breakup. So it's kind of detail in a way. So you don't want, like computers are really good at making things that are all like nice and smooth and perfect. But you want to add more of this kind of layers of noise and so on to try and add details and like the irregularities that you get in nature itself. So we're going to take this noise and we're going to duplicate it and add some more. So grab all of these noise nodes that we just created, Shift D, drop down another copy here, and then we're going to grab another one of these multipliers, Shift D, drop it in between these multipliers. So you're going, you can see these multipliers are basically our layers. So we've got, this is our first layer, it's combining this, this is the layer that's combining our fade, and then this layer here is our next layer of noise. Let's plug that in here like so. And for this one, we want to turn the scale like right down because this is going to make those ribbons like break them up, make them kind of a bit patchy. So now if we control space to come out, you can see that along the ribbon here, there's kind of like chunks missing. Now you might not want this much breakup and this goes for both of these noises here. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. One, of course, is you can adjust this black. So this will cut bigger holes into the noise. And so you can see if we bring this right up here, we've just got a bunch of little blobs. But another thing you can do if you want to keep some of this break up but not make it so strong, you can change the black and make it kind of a gray color. And that'll just keep the variation and we'll do it in this noise as well. 
but it'll just make it a little bit less intense. And that's looking pretty good. The bottom section of the Aurora is like really bright, right? But what you'll notice is the streaks are kind of a bit more intense on the top section and they kind of just go away in this bottom section. So we're gonna try and replicate that. So before continuing, let's frame these new nodes. Just select them all, Control J, and then push F2 and rename it Streaks. And again, push N, give it a color, whatever. We've got already yellow, something like that. Oh yeah, do a save. Please do a save. So rather than combining this fade effect with a simple multiply like we're doing here, we're gonna keep that, but then we're also gonna use this fade effect to modify the streaks. And that's why we put them before the fade. So we're gonna use a map range node and we wanna drop it in between the streaks multiply and the multiply for the fade. So that's right here. And I might just drag all of these over so we can see them a bit more in context. This is the graph at the moment. So the map range kind of works similarly to our color ramp and to our RGB curves node, but rather than being a sort of a visual indication here, it just uses the numbers. So it takes, you know, here's our black, our from zero, from max, this is our white that's coming in in the input, and then you can change them. So this two min is like the value we're plugging into the curves here or the color that we're assigning in the color ramp. The difference with map range is it enables you to plug stuff into these. So they can be modified with a texture or whatever. And that really allows for lots of cool effects to do with things like when you want to eat into a noise and stuff like we've been doing with the ramp. So if you look at this, if I drop this from max, you can see it starts to kind of, the noise starts to go away. It becomes a bit more solid. And that's what we want to modify. I mean, you can see adjust this from min as well. You know, it kind of eats into the noise as well. But the one we want is from max. So from max, we want to sort of set it so that at the bottom, of the Aurora, it's kind of a low number. And then at the top, it just kind of goes back up to the normal sort of one. To be able to specify, you know, what the values are gonna be exactly for this, we're gonna use another map range. <laughs> and uh, bear with me. So Shift D, duplicate that, plug the result into from max, plug the color from our RGB curve into our map range. And so the output values are going to be these ones here. So that means our two min will be high, like say 0.9, and our two max will be low, say 0.1. And there we go. You can see that this bottom section now of the Aurora is a bit more solid, like it's a bit brighter and it's like not broken up so much. Now, now that we've done that though, we'll, we'll have to probably get in here and just maybe adjust this curves again, just to kind of soften off that transition. So pulling this middle point up a little bit and something like that looks pretty good. But now that we've made that a lot brighter, uh, we might just add another multiply. So Shift D, grab this multiply and we'll stick it right up here next to the strength, drop it in here. And this will just be kind of a global brightness scale. The value of one is no change, but then you can hold down Shift and drag it. Maybe do something like so. Before we get into animation as well, I'll just go through a couple of issues that you might, uh, might find yourself getting into. When you're using volumetrics with EV, the main settings you wanna look at are these ones here. You'll see you've got this start and end distance. And this is based off of your camera view. So for instance, if you pull this end distance down, you'll see you know, things will start to disappear and you'll start to, getting, to get these kind of lines that are showing up here. Um, so if you're seeing, even if you're not seeing things disappear, if you're seeing lines like this kind of appear in your renders, you'll have to have a bit of a tweak with these settings. But the key with these settings is that you want them to be kind of the lowest values that you can 
like the lowest values you can kind of get away with. And what I mean by that is the start and end distance kind of is a distance along the camera's view. So for instance, you know, this might be a start, this might be your end. Within the view of the camera, you want to make sure that your start distance is as close as you can to what you see in the camera and your end distance is just long enough to encompass the volumetrics like so. Just looking in your camera view, just adjust your start until stuff starts disappearing, which for us is pretty quick. So we probably just leave that on the default 0.1 and then adjust the end, keep bringing it down again until stuff starts disappearing and then just drag it a little bit past where the things are disappearing. And that should hopefully fix uh, any kind of weird lines that you're getting in your render. There's one last thing I want to fix before we get into the animation. Uh, and you can see kind of as the streams hit the end of the box here, they get pretty much just like cut off. So what I'm going to do is add another kind of fade that goes, instead of being vertical, it goes along the length of the box. So again, same deal, if we just make this full screen, we'll grab these three nodes, Shift D to duplicate, drop them down here, Alt P to unparent them. And now the, if we Control Shift click this gradient, so we've got the vertical gradient here, we set this Y rotation to zero. Um, I think we want to do Z minus 90. Okay, that's that's fine. We'll do use we'll use that because we're going to plug it in to a. Uh, let's do a color ramp again. Drop it in here, and it looks like we kind of want to reverse this. So the left side is white, the right side is black, and then we're going to control click in here somewhere, make it white as well. So we're just fading over the last third of the box. Uh, so again, we're just going to hold down control, right drag across that connection to disconnect it. Shift D, duplicate this multiply. We'll drop it in after the last multiply in the chain. Drag our color from the ramp into the second input again. And then if we follow this all the way up, delete this viewer node. And now you can kind of see it, it's starting to fade off into nothing in the background. I mean, you can pull this, if you pull this black, you can see it's actually clipping it off. So we know it's working. Um, if you want to make that a bit smoother, maybe control and add another uh, color in here and make it a bit darker. And that'll kind of adjust the ramp so that we're getting like a nice sort of fall off before we hit the edge of the box. All right. Let's do some animation. In here, there's heaps of parameters that you can animate. And so I'll go through probably some of the most important ones, but obviously just feel free to jump in, have a play, tweak anything you like. Eevee is so fast, you can just play with things, hit space and watch it play in the viewport pretty much. I think back to like the 90s when I did a job like this, you know, a frame would take 30 minutes to render. So you guys are lucky. Yeah, back in my day. All right, so let's get back into it. So in our ribbon section, this parameter here, the location X, if you hold down shift and drag it, you can see that that moves the ribbons across the sky. So let's just start it there. Hold your pointer over the X, push I, go to the end of your animation, hold down shift, and you don't want these to move too fast because they are still very large objects and very large objects tend to not move quickly. And so it's, we're going to hit that there, push I. Um, to edit the keyframes, you want to make sure you have this mapping node selected, but also make sure that your object up here in the outliner is highlighted. If, you're, if you've got it selected and not highlighted, you won't see keyframes here. So make sure it's selected. If you're not seeing keyframes, just go up here and pick it. And make sure you have the node that you want to edit picked as well. And then make sure you also have your keyframe selected. So they have to be yellow. If they're not yellow, drag a box over them and then push T and go linear. And all this does is basically mean that it won't, you're not going to get an acceleration of movement. You just want it to be a constant speed through the shot. Um, and so now if we hit play, 
If you're getting this kind of glitching effect like this, uh, you could try turning off the viewport denoising. Um, I mean, it's still going to give you kind of a more of a preview sort of look here, but at least you can kind of see what you're doing in real time. Another one you want to edit is this noise texture, also in the ribbon section. This one controls the shape of the noise. And so again, you just want to hold down, hold your mouse over the parameter W, push I, W for wiggle factor. Go to the end of your animation, hold down shift and drag it to the point that you want. Maybe something like 0.5, hit I. Mouse over the timeline here, go to linear, hit play on that. And that looks pretty cool. Unrelated to animation, I also wanted to mention that this mix here controls the amount of distortion. So you can kind of drag it up or bring it back down and that will control how much distortion is happening to these ribbons. I also, you know, different auroras, they all look different. Uh, I think for this one, I might actually make these kind of a bit less ribbony. So I might sort of diffuse them out a bit more. So you can you do that by kind of expanding on these, make it a bit kind of more hazy and cloudy. Do something like this. I mean, you can even just control click a uh, swatch in here, add a bit of like hazy extra stuff. Yeah, but feel free to kind of jump in there. Like, you can, like I said, these are all, it's all real time. You can kind of see, you know, what you're doing. Might also just turn down the overall strength again. If you want it to be more streaky, of course, you can just scale on Z then do a GZ. Give it a bit more height like so. Uh, so other parameters here um, in our noise in our streaks, we should make all of these 4D. So this one and this one should be 4D and that will give us our W here. Uh, now this parameter I found, you don't want to animate it too much. If we just set a keyframe at frame one there, go to the end of the animation, maybe do like 0.1 or something. Set that keyframe, select the node again, push T here, linear. And again, same deal, shift left arrow to go back to the beginning of the animation. I, select the node, go to the end here. And this one, we can try something like that. Two, T, linear, and then hit play, see what you got. Yeah, it looks a bit crazy. Might need to turn this animation down a bit. So that being the case, you can also just turn your timeline here into like a graph editor. And with your mouse over this, make sure you've got the node selected. Hit home and that'll show you your animation here. And so for instance, for this one, I think the speed's probably a bit too much. I will probably want to drop it down by a third so I can grab this last keyframe here and just do GY bring it down to like that much, hit play. And so that's all there is to it. So one last step we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ground that we created right at the beginning and let's just use it to hide uh, these trees and stuff in the background. I mean, you can use this, the HDR background if you want, just hide the ground and render it straight up like so. Uh, but if you wanna put just a little bit of a, kind of a silhouette mountain thing, I mean, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on creating a landscape. That's like a whole other tutorial. So a simple way to kind of just add a bit of silhouetted landscape is what we might do is tab, right click, go subdivide, press F9, add some subdivisions, maybe add some more, 80, call it 80, that'll do. Maybe just hide the Aurora for a second with the H key. So let's do some quick window rearranging here. This is purely so you guys can see a bit better what I'm doing, um, but I'm just going to get rid of these windows. And what I might do here is just split this window like so, zoom out a little bit here so we can see the horizon and then in this view here, we're just gonna go up here and go into 
sculpt mode, turn off the mirroring. And then you can use, if you haven't used sculpt mode before, we're not gonna go too depth into it, but basically use the F key to change your brush size and then just kind of paint up some quick and dirty mountains like so. Just enough to kind of cover any trees that you can see. So we can see some on the left here. We'll just cover these up like so. And then a little bit on the right like that. So something simple like that will do. Then go back into object mode, right click this object, go shade smooth. And then let's just go into the material tab here, make a new material and then set the base color to black. Make sure there's no specular, set that also to zero and then that's done. So bring back your Aurora. Let's get rid of this view here. And so you end up with something like that. I've got a couple examples up here of different versions that I've been playing with. And the name of the game with this one is Experiment. Anyone can sit here and do a tutorial and watch me plug in the numbers and plug in exactly the same numbers. But what I really want to encourage you to do with this tutorial, experiment, play with it, because that's the best way to learn. And I'd love to see what you guys do with it. So please put it on Instagram, tag me at DylanNeil3D. So jump in there, have a go, and I'll see you in the next video.